What is the genetics of blue eyes? Are blue eyes actually a recessive trait? And can you predict what colour eyes your children will have? Now, blue eyes are generally considered the second most common eye colour in the world after brown, at 8 to 10% of the global population. They are most common in Northern Europe, but found in people across the world, although many of these people do have ancestry that does connect to Europe. An interesting point to note up front is that it seems that blue eyes are more common in men than women, with women having higher rates of green and brown eyes. Although the exact mechanism is not fully clear, the results of one 2016 study indicated that the higher estrogen levels in women may change the expression of the genes that control melanin, with melanin of course referring to a family of biochemicals that control the level of pigment that gives hair, skin and eyes their colour. Now let's look at whether blue eyes are a recessive trait or not, and whether you can predict the colour of your children's eyes. You often hear people saying that blue eyes are recessive and brown eyes are dominant, and this was the older belief. The older genetic inheritance model of eye colour basically said that you received one gene, eye colour gene from your dad, and one from your mum, and brown was dominant and blue was recessive, which basically meant that the dominant gene, the brown gene, always dominated over the blue gene, and in order to have blue eyes, you would have to receive the same blue eyed gene from both parents, even though it may not have been expressed in those parents, in order to have blue eyes. In recent years, however, many scientists now believe that this recessive versus dominant model is a bit oversimplistic, and the genetic inheritance model of eye colour is much more complicated than this. In fact, the genetics of eye colour are so complex that almost any parent-child combination of eye colours can occur. Although it is unlikely, two blue-eyed parents can have a child with brown eyes, for instance. So although you can have an idea of what colour eyes your children will have, two blue-eyed parents, for instance, will probably quite likely have a blue-eyed child. Genetic variations can produce quite surprising results in certain circumstances. This is because at least 16 genes are involved in eye colour, with the OCA2 and HER2 genes in particular very important in blue eyes developing, something I'm going to go into in a little more detail later in the video. Furthermore, results from a 2021 study that included nearly 200,000 European participants and nearly 2,000 Asian participants indicated that there are at least 61 genomic regions that are involved in eye colour, 50 of which were unidentified prior to the study. The authors concluded that the genetic complexity of human eye colour considerably exceeds previous knowledge and expectations. There is lots we do know about the genetics of blue eyes, however, but before we get into that, and for anyone who didn't see my previous video on the origin and reason for blue eyes, let's quickly look at why blue eyes appear blue, and I do mean appear blue. After all, there is no actual blue pigmentation in any of the layers of the iris in people with blue eyes, and if you were to dissect an eye of someone with blue eyes, don't try this at home. You would only find a dark pigmentation inside. Blue eyes appear blue because of how light is scattered within the iris. People with blue eyes have less melanin in the front layers of the iris than people with brown, hazel and green eyes, but probably more than people with grey eyes. Now this low level of melanin in people with blue eyes allows light to be scattered in a similar way to why the sky appears blue. In people with blue eyes, longer wavelengths of light tend to be absorbed by the dark underlying epithelium, while shorter wavelengths are reflected and undergo a process similar to Rayleigh scattering, which is the process which makes the sky appear blue with the colour blue having a shorter wavelength, and it's also pretty abundant in nature. Thus, people appear to have blue eyes because of how light is reflected, and it's this lower concentration of melanin that allows this light to be reflected. And it's a complex genetic process that determines how much melanin is produced by the iris. Now let's look at what the genetics of blue eyes are. Although we are still trying to map the full process, we know that two genes in particular are very important in the development of blue eyes, OCA2 and HER2 which are located on chromosome 15. Now the OCA2 gene, which was formerly called the P gene, provides instructions for making a protein called the P protein. This protein is located in melanocytes, which are specialised cells that produce the pigment melanin, which, as we know, is the substance that gives skin, hair and eyes their colour. I should note that there are different types of melanin, such as the darker eumelanin, the yellow-reddish pheomelanin, which is high in people with red hair for example, and also neuromelanin, which as the name suggests is found in the brain. Now the HERC2 gene controls a segment of DNA that controls the activity or expression of the OCA2 gene, turning it off and on as needed. At least one polymorphism in this area of the HERC2 gene has been shown to reduce the expression of OCA2 and decrease P protein production, leading to less melanin in the iris and therefore lighter coloured eyes. 
So in layman's terms, the OCRA2 gene sends instructions for a whole process that results in melanin being produced, and then the HERC2 gene basically controls the expression of the OCRA2 gene, turning it on and off like a light switch, similar to this lamp. And now we are starting to see the genetic basis behind blue eyes. As a 2021 study from Nature that looked at this OCA2 hair C2 locus wrote, the OCA2 hair C2 genes explain most of the blue and brown eye colour inheritance. Different polymorphisms in the regulatory and coding region of OCA2 are primarily associated with different eye, hair and skin pigmentation phenotypes. Now these polymorphisms relate to another important feature we need to understand, SMPs or SNPs as the cool kids seem to call them. Now for those that are not too familiar with them, an SMP or SNP stands for a single nucleotide polymorphism, which is a substitution of a single nucleotide at a specific position in the genome. Each SNP represents a difference in a single DNA building block, with roughly 4 to 5 million SNPs in a person's genome. This picture shows it quite well. As you can see, both the upper and lower DNA molecules are the same, yet there is a difference at a single point, with a G and a C changed to an A and a T, and this is a SNP. Now for blue eyes, one SNP in particular has been associated with blue eyes, and along with a few other SNPs, they have been used to predict eye colour quite effectively. As this paper from Nature wrote, One SNP in particular, RS129-13832 in hair c 2 is responsible for the greatest proportion of eye colour predictability. This SNP, together with five other SNPs, located in other genes, have been brought together in the Iris Plex eye colour prediction panel. The accuracy rate of correctly predicting an individual's eye colour as being either blue or brown is on average 94% in Europe. Additional variation has yet to be identified to account for the poor success rate for intermediate eye colour predictions, such as green eyes and hazel eyes at 73% accuracy, and in admix populations. To expand on this, a 2023 study further elaborates on the role this particular SNP plays in blue eye colour versus brown eye colour. The SMP or SNP, RS129-13832, is strongly associated with eye colour and a good predictor of blue and brown eye colours. RS129-13832 is located in the promoter region of OCA2 and influences the transcription of OCA2. The A allele of this SNP is important for recruitment of transcription factors that positively affect transcription of OCA2 and thus production of eumelanin through melanogenesis. In contrast, the G allele has a negative effect on OCA2 expression and the production of eumelanin. For this reason, individuals with the genotype GG are expected to have blue eyes, while individuals with the genotypes AA or GA are expected to have brown eyes. This study however notes that the picture is more complex than even this, as approximately 3% of Europeans with this RS129-13832 GG genotype have brown eye colours, whereas from the prediction model they should have blue eyes. This study however went on to identify four variants in other genes that may explain why these people have brown eyes, including in the TYR gene, which is involved in the first step of melanin production. So basically other changes that affect other genes also have an impact on eye colour. So an important point to note is that all these studies that are, that are basically talking about the genetic prediction mechanisms are basically talking about blue eyes versus brown eyes. For, for the in-between colours such as green and hazel, they basically don't have much of an understanding of, of what's really going on. They may be connected to, to these mechanisms and probably are in some way, but other genes may be involved as well. So they, these are basically looking at blue eyes versus brown eyes. There, there's much more of an understanding of the different mechanisms and basically the switches that turn you know blue or, or, or brown eyes. Um, but for the intermediate colours like green and hazel, there's much less of an understanding. Although we still are trying to map the full genetics of blue eyes, we do have quite a lot of information now as we have seen. And this obviously OCA2, hair C2 region, and the SNPs around that region, and the different variations in genes that affect that region, seems to be the, the primary driver of blue eyes versus brown eyes. But like I say, for, for intermediate colours, like green and hazel, it's much less clearer about the genetics involved there. Despite genetics obviously being the main driver of eye colour, what role could light in the environment play as selective pressures that help explain why blue eyes are so common in some parts of the world, such as Europe, and not in other regions of the world, such as Asia? To find out about the origin and reason for blue eyes, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and I'll see you next time.